Now that's some paranormal shit. Reagan, this is TK. Hello. <laughs> Hello, TK. <laughs> I'm a lot of bucks, man. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, like, dude. I now, I now I want to see his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I want to see what he's talking about. Like, the rest of the eye socket is just, like, being oh. lazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, what does that make the eye, like, sit like? <laughs> oh, man. Because, you know, you never hear about stuff like that. What I want... I told uh, TK a lot about your story, about what you're going through with your paranormal experiences. And... I, oh. Yeah, I kind of want you to explain it in your words to him. Oh, well, that, let, me, uh, let me explain that, bro. Uh, oh, heck. So, ever since I've been a kid, I've always seen, I've always seen, like, a figure, like, and I, I'm not trying to be some ridiculous kind of person and, and make this, this character up, but I've always seen... Have you ever seen The Undertaker whenever he comes out of an all Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I shit you not. Uh, I apologize if I, if I cut too much. No, nah, nah, don't worry about it, man. Okay. Hey, this is, this, is, uh, this is Will's world, bro. You can cuss as much as you want. It's <laughs> <laughs> still for good buddy. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Fuck other people's feelings. That's the way I say it. Yes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> So this this figure I've always seen as a kid, it looks like a image of the Undertaker, but I don't see I can't see like eyes, I can't see skin. I just see a tall man in a black hat okay. with long stringy hair. But he's never gotten close to me ever. It used to be my dream, especially when there was a lot of stress. Yeah. And, and in my household when I was younger, when everyone would be cussing and fighting and yelling and, you know, things bad going on in my life, I would see this guy. I would see him. And I, one day, I heard my little sister talk about talk about this person. And he kind of struck a chord with me. I was like, this is exactly what I see. And then my dad said he saw the same thing as well. And... It was confusing, so we started talking about it a little more. And I was like, for years, I would see him in the same dream. It would be in a bar, and I'd be in there by myself. And I would see him on the other side of the bar drinking, but I can't see his face. Mm. And was it just like I a hat low, talking. or is he just turned away? Yeah, was... like his, his hat is low. Like, I can't see I can't see his face. His hat is low. Like, I could never see his face. Right. And as I would look a little closer, and he'd be a little, a little closer without moving, you know, like next chair over. And then I'd look away, and I'd look back, and he'd be right there. And every time he got close to me, I would always, like, be scared. You know how those dreams, when you fall, and before you hit the ground, you wake up, like, nervous? Yeah, and yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. That's, that's exactly the way I would wake up. I would wake up like, oh, my God, like, like it would freak me out. Oh, man, dude. And I don't know, just throughout my life, I've always seen it. But then I started seeing it, like, actually physical, like, in areas of my life. Like, I remember when my grandmother died, I seen him. And I scared the living shit out of me. Did you? And I remember, oh, man. I remember, I remember whenever I moved, I moved into... My and the last time I moved in with my parents, I remember seeing him. I remember my dad. My my dad was on his deathbed a few years ago, pretty much. Sorry to hear and that, I remember my dad would be talking about him, and it scared the living shit out of me because it almost felt like that that being was right there. So, do you think that was some kind of a uh, maybe a, a a spirit of someone that was related to you, or it could be. I've never really dug deep into it, but it could be a bunch of things because my, from when I talked to my dad, my dad said that his mom was into a lot of scary shit when she was younger, and she was trying to conjure up shit she could, she should have never conjured up. Yeah. Uh, same as, same as my, my mom, my mom was into that stuff too, and I, I, 
I don't know. It could be anything. I, it also, well, also it could be my, my, my grandfather's. My grandfather was a mortician, and he was a man that dressed in black all the time. My dad, had, he never really, my dad only met him once or twice, but every time he said he'd meet him or hear about him, he was always in black, dressed in black. Yeah. And I remember when I was a kid, I don't know exactly what the words were, but I remember hearing my dad's grandfather, or my dad's dad, my grandfather. But that was it. That's all I ever remember from them. And I don't know, but throughout my life, though, you know, even at my house now, this is the house that I'm living in now, there's the living shit out of a lot of people that come over. Uh, you know, I always feel like somebody's watching me. Totally. And I'm not a paranoid person. I'm really, I'm really chill. I'm real laid back. Really, really, really chill person. But I always feel like somebody's watching me. Okay, now... Okay, you saying that right there, for some reason now, every time I see you at work, I'm going to be thinking of that song from, I think it's from Men at Work. I feel like somebody's watching me. <laughs> yeah. This, um, no, but this yeah. kind of reminds me of this, this story that, I guess it came from the Philippines, but what they were saying was like a white dog would be seen at some point, and if it sits in front of someone's house... That means the next day someone would have passed. Really? If this white dog comes over to someone's house and it like doesn't really walk up to the house, it just stops in front of it and sits down and stares at that house. Yeah. And they said that it was like a it was like a local legend thing. But you know, in other places, other parts of the world, people might say something like it was a certain bird. Yeah. It would just suddenly like show up on the windowsill mm-hmm. somewhere. And then they would have like Three family members at some point passed, but right before they passed, there was some white bird that always just showed up. Right. But I'm wondering if it was, uh, I've heard something said that was like, where it was like a black dog. And. Don't forget about the owl. Yeah, there's an owl thing too. But I'm wondering, what if it's just not specific to just, because you know, humans, we're basically, we're just a mammal. Yeah. I'm wondering if it's, it doesn't have to be some other species. It could be just a. It could be a person yeah. that's doing the same thing. Yeah. Whereas in this case, it's a tall guy that's dressed in black with long hair and a You're big hat. You're talking about some sort of reincarnation as an animal to warn others or something. Well, like, it could be just. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's like something that's like the same type of thing. It just sort of like it shows up and it's kind of like looking for who's gonna pass. Yeah. It's kind of like a death. Ooh. So it's like, in your life, what you're being visited by and people around you might be visited by, like, this is what, I guess, physical form it's coming in. Right. And it's coming in the form of a guy who's just a tall guy with long hair and wears a big hat. Could, yeah, I mean... Could be, like, doing the same I- thing. I've always, I've always felt like that, that like what you said is that's something what I've always felt like as well. I feel like maybe my 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 last name is Curse. Maybe, maybe you know, my dad or my grandmother did touch on something, you know, long ago, or my mom or someone in the family did right. touch on something long ago that I just don't know anything of, and now it's time that they're reaping. It's reaping its rewards. You think it's on you, though? It, it's never... The, the crazy thing about it, everybody in my life, around me, that my family, has been... Something tragic happened to them. Like, I've had health issues, I've had problems, but I've always conquered and prevailed. Mm-hmm. But everybody else in my life, like my dad, just never recovered. My mom never recovered. My brothers never recovered. I've always recovered. Well, maybe maybe you are the uh, the that pinpoint on that change. Maybe you have the courage to, you know, not saying that your 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 other family members, whether your dad or whoever, didn't have the courage. Maybe you have that extra strength that helps you prevail. I feel like it's the that Johnny Cash song when the man comes around, 
And yeah. instead of it being a white horse, it's a man in black. Yeah. Well, how often do you have these dreams or if you see him not in a dream? Like, how often does it happen? Like, do years go by at a time? It, it usually, it's usually every few months. Wow, that's, well, that's pretty frequent. Yeah. Oh, crap. But since you were a kid? Ever since I've been a kid. How old are you now? 24. Man. Okay, you mentioned something about, uh, you're, you're experiencing some sort of what others would deem as poltergeist activity. Um, with things moving. You, you had stated to me before about, I told TK about this a while back ago about, uh, one of your bedrooms. I believe it was your, your kid's room, right? Yeah. How a teddy bear moved or something? Oh, yeah, dude. That was scary shit. I, uh, I walked into my, something about my kid's bedroom, man, just ain't right. Something not, it just ain't right in there. Like, I don't care what cake may be. You go in my kid's bedroom, it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. Is it that thing where, like yeah, you I'm said, you feel like you're being watched all the time? But just that feeling yeah, was, increase in that room? Yes, it's like like someone's right in your face when you go in there. Mm. And, you know, I walk in there, and I'm like, I swear, that fucking teddy bear was put up. Because I, I keep her room pretty, pretty clean. Mm. I was like, I, it was a big teddy bear, too. And I was like, I know cats didn't fuck with it. So, I, I you know, I, I, I said whatever. And I walked downstairs, but when I walked downstairs... I'm hearing, I'm hearing like, it kind of like sounds like cats. My cats are like up there fucking around, you know. Right. But then I get back up there, and I realize cats are downstairs. What the fuck? And I get back, I get back, back up there, and I see that this teddy bear is moving around, and I still, I still don't think anything of it though. And I mean, that's not the, the scariest thing. I personally it was when the door opened by itself, but. Scared shit at me. Right. Hmm. The door, door came open on my own mask one time. But that, I mean, that could have been, like, draft or something. Yeah. You know, there's just, there's a lot of things. You would have to, like, feel the vibe of the house yourself. Like, I have one of my buddies here. I don't know if he would, uh, he gets a bad feeling from upstairs. If he would like to hear, hear what he has to say, you know, because it, a lot of people, uh, all the way from Pettis, all the way from Garcia, Tim Garcia, Galvan, uh, anyone that's came over to my house, my brothers, they don't like, they don't like being here. No one likes being here. See, um, when, okay, would you be good with us as far as investigating? Yeah, I've already told you before, man. <laughs> I hear that. Oh, yeah, because I'm wondering if uh, we might be able to catch some EVPs. That's what I'm saying. Because uh, we're usually we're trying to find that vibe, and that's where we want to do EVP sessions. The only, the only hard part is that he works on my sister shift. Oh. So like he's only out like right now he would be working day shift. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it would be. I guess it would be all right that we're working day shift. We just can't. We just wouldn't be able to be there that long. Be, since we're working day shift, night shift, it would be pretty much damn near impossible. The stairs in my house are another scary. Uh, people say like they feel like they're being pushed, but I don't know if that's just are they being a deep, right. like the roof gets so deep up and it just kind of. Giving that vibe. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, because I, I, I do try to debunk before I I think it's something else because I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna hype people up, I don't wanna hype myself up and it being just people's paranoia. All right. No, I, I I totally agree. Um that's the main thing that we do, just to just to keep you informed is uh, just like we, we told Esco and stuff, like we're not we we're not there to get rid of anything. We're there to document 
so that you have evidence to back up your statements. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I, myself, TK is more of the, the calm mm. one. I'm more of the aggressive. You know what I mean? Uh, as TK has a, a certain approach to, you know, doing EVPs, where it's more, you know, calm, cool, collective. Yeah, like I'm more inviting and yeah. trying to trying to not make it tense. Yeah, I'm more of a, a an aggressive, which I think that's a a good thing in our part because we have two different styles instead of just one. Well, yeah, because um, because one of the things we've talked about in in the past, we talk about it every now and then, is what vibe comes off of you. Yeah. Whenever you're doing an EVP session, because a vibe could change the behavior of whatever else is there. Yeah. Just like with Esco in his place, we were talking about how every time they had some activity go on, it was always when everyone was just sort of chilling. Yeah. They were just re- trying to be relaxed, w- like watching a movie or something. Mm-hmm. That's when things happen. But when we came in to investigate, we had a completely different vibe. We're not just chilling. Yeah. Like we're searching. Yeah. And the change of the vibe might have changed the behavior of whatever it is we're trying to find. Yeah. Uh, you, okay, you saw the video over at Esco's place, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, uh, if you take away the electrical a, a part as far as, like, the light bulb and just made it actual a paranormal thing, do you think that it was more of a... Uh, its way of actually, you know, signaling to us his response, his or her response, whoever the spirit is. Yes. Because I've I've talked to Esco about it, and he had stated before that that's never happened, ever. Well, yeah, and Esco, he's a guy who, like, spends so many hours just hanging out in that room. Yeah. I and mean, then for, like, six years yeah, he's, that he's lived there? More than that, I think. Okay. Yeah, for a while. They've had so, that house. You'd figure, like, if that's where he's always just sort of laying around, mm-hmm. he would notice if that's happening. Yeah. Now, as far as your place, I'm very interested on not only capturing the evidence or trying to capture evidence, but to capture that feeling that you're talking about, that you get, and that other people who have gone to your place have gotten. I know it sounds crazy, you know, like, why would anybody want to have an unpleasant feeling? But it's just something that, you know, we're willing to do is try to capture whatever we can to deem this place as something truly paranormal. Yes, and I appreciate that, Builder. And thank you guys for even, you know, considering me for this. Because I feel that it's about time that, you know, I've done something and we've done something about this because it, it's truly crazy when I have company over and they just don't want to be here. Right. And it has, and it has nothing to do with me being me. It's just they don't want to be in a place that gives them bad vibes. I, uh, I, I read the mention because it's all kind of coming back up because I haven't talked about this in a while. Uh, do you ever feel like, like you're getting rushed by something? Rushed as like, a, how do you mean? Like, like, like someone, like, is, like, you know when someone's running up on you? Like, like they're almost about to fight you? Oh, uh, that happens here and so, there. I mean, like, because I know, um, one of the nightmares I had as a kid, there's nothing paranormal about it, it was just a regular nightmare, but... The nightmare was I was walking around my neighborhood and no one was there. It was all empty, like abandoned. And I sat in a park, like on a bench, yeah, just to think about it and all the silence. And while I was sitting there thinking about it, I heard footsteps running at me from behind. And so that made me jump. And then it woke me up. But I guess that's the feeling I'm thinking you're trying to describe is like someone yeah, it's come rushing back. you. That's perfect. Yeah, that is the, the best way to describe it, TK. Thank you. Uh... Yeah, whenever, I remember when I first started, uh, when I first was moving in here, and I was coming up the steps, and in my room, in my room, it was like half light from the moon, 
where you could kind of see still, and it was not dark. And I remember it felt like someone was trying to rush me, like like from the dark. And but when it hit the light part of the area, it just it went away. Right. The feeling, the feeling went away, and that's happened to me twice, just twice in the two and a half years I've lived here. It, I, I feel like I've been rushed twice, but I that could just could have been you know me coming back from work. That, and that I could be. Yeah, I mean, you got to look at all possible aspects. I mean, you and I, we, we work out of what can be a very stressful environment and what can be very, you know, anxiety style of environment where, you know, you think that something's, you know, coming at you at times. Like, I've, I've felt that before, you know, where I've come home. And then all of a sudden, I felt kind of stressed and ex- and anxiety kicked in. Yeah. And then it was just me and my imagination that pretty much. But you know, I just take a breather and smoke a cigarette and chill. But yes, sir. You know, and that, but you have stated before that huh. this okay, this isn't necessarily a a a haunted place, but more of a haunting that's following you. Yeah, I don't think it. I don't think it's my house. I think it's me. I think it's things from my past. I think it's things that just follow. I think it's just there's something about me that I don't know that I need to know. I know that makes no sense, but I just there's there's a mystery that needs to be solved. Maybe I can feel a little bit better about it. Right. Because. Everywhere I went, I felt, I felt different. I felt like something is trying to either speak to me or I've been given maybe a sense of, I know when something's there, maybe, you know, you know, I don't know what it could be, but I feel it's me. I don't feel like it's my house. Right. No, I, I, I hear you. Uh, and that's what really like, like inspired me to. Uh, try to investigate with you because uh, you know we've me and TK all we investigated has been places that were deemed as haunted or has a reputation of being haunted